no doubts. Okay, can you take chart of TVS motor on the expiry day? Can you take chart of TVS motor on the expiry day? Okay, so let's say I take this chart, I open it up. Let me change the color so that it's clearly visible to you. All right, I have the volumes. They are a little lighter in color. Let me change them. Okay, so you're talking about TVS motor. So we come to TVS motor, right? And um, yeah, this is Thursday's data. So tell me, strange movement during last hour. Strange movement. Okay. So in the market, there is no, nothing a strange movement. Okay. Uh, it's just movement. You are finding it strange. It's it's someone would have found found it perfect. So let's let's look into the movement of last hour. Now what happens is if we come to the hourly charts, we see that the the TVS motor shot up, you know, quite a bit in the last hour, and someone may find it really strange. Now what happens in expiry day, especially in the last half an hour, is a lot of erstwhile positions gets rolled over or they they get high volume trades. So every expiry day, the last hour, you will always find very high volumes, right? Uh, that is because of a lot of positions getting rolled over, a lot of arbitrage positions getting closed. So all these volumes are kept aside for probably the last hour of the expiry day and that's when all the trades happen. When a lot of orders, especially these big institutional orders are getting traded in the market in the last half an hour or 60 minutes of the expiry day, we tend to see a lot of spikes in volumes and a lot of spikes in price as well. Prices tend to behave very sharply either on the upside or on the downside. Uh, this is a very common feature of the market, especially on the last hour of the expiry day. Especially on the last 30 minutes, you will see the movement between 3 and 3.30. It's not strange. Few expiry days, it can be really sharp. Uh, if it was TVS motor, it may not be the same case the next expiry. But there are stocks. Uh, which uh, behave sharply in either direction in the last half an hour. Same thing again, if you, uh, you've probably started tracking the markets, the more expiry days you see, the better understanding you'll get. Right, Sachin? Okay. <laughs> Questions, please. Okay, what is Bollinger Band? Uh, Bollinger Band is. Um, let me show you. We are in TVS Motor daily chart, and let me quickly plot the Bollinger Band. So what I have on my screen uh, is Bollinger Band on TVS Motor chart. The Bollinger Band is made up of three lines. The mid one, which is slightly gray in color is a 20 day moving average. The green on top is a two standard deviation added to this and a two standard deviation subtracted to this gives me the lower band. Essentially, uh, the Bollinger Band is a volatility band. So when the market move, moves up or down and the range expands, you see the difference between the bands, the green and the red difference, they're much wider in nature. So volatility has increased. When they come very close to each other, you see that the candles are become very um, small, the, the ranges have shrunk, so volatility has reduced. This is taking a shape of what we call in Bollinger Band a squeeze. Now, as because we are taking two standard deviation plus and minus of the average, we can make a, a judgment, not a very clean one, that 95% uh, of the time the market will close within these bands. May not be the case all the time. So it's a volatility band. It tells us about the nature of the price. And when the band squeezes like this in this zone, we see that the market is not going anywhere. The, the candles are very small and the bodies are very small. This will eventually lead to a volatility rise and the market will sharply go up or down. So volatility band, which encompasses markets most of the time, and tells us whether the market is in a volatile zone or in a quiet zone.
Right. I hope that clears out part. There are many trading strategies on Bollinger Band also, but the important thing would be to understand the basics of the band and uh, follow it before you jump into how you can get into a trade using Bollinger Bands. Right, thank you. <laughs> Doubts anyone guys? Okay, I'll explain it again. Okay, so this is the Bollinger Band. What it does is it plots in the middle a 20 day simple moving average. It's an average of prices. The one on the top is two standard deviation added to the average. The one on the bottom is two standard deviation subtracted from the average. So it is trying to cover 95% of the candles within the green and the red. In a very simple layman's language it can be said that it is trying to encompass 95 times out of 100 candles within these the green and the red. But these bands have the nature to contract and expand. So when it's contracting if you see over here in this zone the green and the red are coming close to each other and the difference between the green and red is shrinking. It's coming down the difference. They are coming close to each other. So why are they coming close to each other? Because the volatility bands are shrinking, are coming close to each other because the range of the price, you see over here the candles are very small, it's not moving sharply up or down. When the volatility is contracting, it will lead to volatility expansion. Now see over here, the difference between the green line and the red line, it's quite a lot compared to what it was over here. So this zone is the squeeze which talks about the volatility contracting, means the market is range bound. If the market is range bound, it will lead to a market volatility expansion. Volatility does not have a direction, so that expansion can be on the upside and or on the downside. When the market has expanded and you see the difference between the green and red to be significant, you cannot expect that the market will go further from there from that point. So after an expansion, there should be some degree of contraction. So what happens after this point? The market goes into a range again. And then it goes into further expansion and then contraction and then expansion again. Basically, it's a volatility band which tells us whether the market is in a quiet mode or in a noisier trending mode. There are some trading techniques, as I said, that can be uh, uh, the, the, that the Bollinger Band can be used to uh, pinpoint those trading techniques. But the important thing would be to plot them and to take a look how those bands are behaving in the market first and then jump into those trading strategies. <sighs> okay. Finding a pattern increases the probability of happening of the pattern characteristics, right? Does it happen that even after forming a pattern, market goes opposite to its characteristics? Highly possible, Sachin. Uh, in the market, we should wear all our uh, safety guards all the time. The market can behave completely opposite to your expectations. Uh, it tends to do so. Even if you have a pattern in place and the pattern says that the market is supposed to come down, uh, the market may not come down and go further up. So it's it's not foolproof, nothing is full, foolproof in the markets. It gives, it just raises a probability. But there's always scope for the market to do just the opposite of what we anticipate or you anticipate. So that's where the stop loss kicks in, that's where the money management and the risk management kicks in, that's where one needs to know where to pull the plug and stop its losses. Uh, that is the most important thing about trading, the money management and the psychology part of it. But uh, having said that, nothing is foolproof under the sun. No form of analysis, be it technicals or fundamentals or astrologicals or astronomical can give you a foolproof 100% probability one trade in the market, uh, trade after trade. Market does have a nasty habit at times to prove you wrong. 
it will prove you wrong at times take it as a learning experience and move on to the next trade that's the best medicine right <clears throat> any other doubts guys <clears throat> I'll just check the chat box if I've missed anything. Um, all right, so clear that out. Yeah, it's more or less cleared. Okay, how to determine direction when a stock moves beyond all time high? How to determine direction? The direction obviously is on the upside, that's not a much of an issue. So let's say um, this was the all time high of a market and it started to go up. So you have marked this is the all-time high of a certain stock and the market has now broken above it. So judging the direction is not a problem because the direction is obviously on the up. So it's going further up. What will be difficult to judge is how far can it go? What can be the, let's say the, that we call is the target of the market, right? Now when a market goes above its all-time high, when a stock goes above its high time uh, all-time highs, it is essentially gaining strength. It is essentially gaining momentum. So it will go further up. But how far the targets? There are tools to, uh, we can use to uh, find out those targets. Again, they are not always foolproof. There are pattern targets. Uh, there are targets based on Fibonacci extensions and projections, which are a complex tool, which are not part of our learning uh, you know, syllabus right now. We are focusing more on the theoretical part about judging the price direction. Uh, having said that, uh, these tools which helps us determine the target uh, at times give us very good target for projections on the up, up, upside. But when you have movement like stocks like Aurobindo Pharma, when you have stocks like TCS which are extremely strong and can continues to go up, uh, the market breaks these targets on the upside and goes and extends further up. So there are ways, but those ways um, may not be foolproof all the time. Right. All right, stochastic. Uh, stochastic is a form of a momentum indicator. Uh, under oscillators and indicators. So when you plot stochastics, The default parameters on any softwares may come as 533 or 1333. So let's say I'm on uh, 533, I can make it 1033 to make you make the understanding clear. So the stochastic oscillator is made up of two uh, lines, um, the red, uh, the black and the red. So the black is the, the stochastic slow, which is the 10 period. So what it does, what George Lane who calculated it found out that, let's find out, okay, the range of last 10 days. Let's find out the highest point and the lowest point of last 10 days. And where do I stand vis-a-vis -vis the range? So if I am, if the current price is closer to the range, then the stochastic is, is sloping up on the upside and vice versa. Then what he found out that the stochastic was a very volatile indicator. It changed quite sharply. So it needed to be slowed down. So any indicator, anything in life that needs to be slowed down, you do a, you calculate an average of it. So this three, the next three, is a three exponential moving average of this 10 day calculation. And then there's another simple three day moving average calculation of this previous three. End of all this leads to an indicator which we call stochastic oscillator made up of two lines these lines crisscross each other from the top or from the bottom. There are many rules to enter and exit. The most basic is that you look to buy a crossover on the upside and sell a crossover on the downside. I think it is George Lynn himself who has uh, categorized that these are not the best of trades all the time. 
to use crossovers or stochastics what i will suggest is you should have a much uh, slower parameter like 13 5 3 and all where if you, if you see that the crossovers will reduce a bit but again as i said some time back these crossovers don't give you the best of trades what it can do is it can give you overbought and oversold territories so the overbought and oversold territories for stochastics are 80 on the top and 20 on the bottom so when the market falls below when the stochastic falls below 20 this is the black line this zone is the oversold from where the market can come out and above 80 is the overbought from where the market can fall now having said that the issue with overbought and oversold is if it's a strong trending market now we are still on uh, TVS motor and we see that from this point from 243 onwards the stock went on to 270 and the indicators stayed in the overbought territory so if it's a trending market not the best of tools for overbought oversold but if it's a range bound market it can give you good overbought oversold readings TVS motor has not been in a trending uh, has not been in a trading zone for a long time so let's say this is the range this was a range bound movement from TVS. So every time it went above the 80, kind of came off. It went below 20, it bounced back. But the moment it picked up steam, the moment it picked up into a trend, that is where the overbought oversold will not work as well. The third way to use stochastics would be the classical divergences. That's the best way, where if the market is, is going further up, but the stochastic is falling, that gives you an indication that the market can fall. In this case, you see that the market is falling, but you see what the stochastic was doing. The stochastic was going further up. This is called a divergence, and the divergences are the best tool for the momentum indicators to judge the possible trend reversals in the market. So that's how you use the stochastic oscillator. It's a momentum oscillator. If you want crossovers, increase the time frames. 13, 8, 3, 13, 5, 3, 20, 5, 3, etc. It's very volatile indicator. Um, to use it, the best way to do it would be to look for price and stochastics divergences. Right. Factors controlling high, low movements. Now, if it's of price that you're asking, Mr. Uh, Prabhakaran, then if you're looking for factors, there can be n number of factors. And if you're looking for simple answers, then only the two factors are demand and supply. So why does a market move up? And why is the market going above its all time high? Because those who are buying over here and here and at every stage, they sense that I, I, I am looking at a much higher price where I can sell. So buy low, sell high is their idea. So they are demanding for that stock at every price. So the demand for it is much more than the supply. The supply is what is given by the sellers. The sellers believe that the prices will not go further up from here. That's why they are selling or else they wouldn't have sold. The buyers who are buying it are willing to even buy at a little higher price because they know that it will go further up. So how do they know that that knowing can be in form of fundamental analysis, that knowing can be in form of technical analysis, that knowing can be in form of insider information or anything. We are not here to question how do they know or how do they judge. What we know is when we have an uptrend, the intensity of demand is more than that of that of supply. Now, there can be n number of factors, as I said. There can be news, there can be fundamental factors, but all of them boils down to these two most important facts, which a stock moves based on the demand and the, the supply. That's it. Right. Good. So, uh, thank you. All right, I've answered that. Any doubts further? <clears throat> I'll repeat uh, once again that uh, practice makes a man perfect, so please start looking into charts regularly. 
it'll help to understand the theory. Path uh, morning star and evening star back to candlesticks. So morning star and evening star are three candlestick patterns. If you're in a downtrend, uh, day one is the negative day, which is in line with the market. Day two is a spinning top, small body candlestick. It can be positive or negative. The color does not matter. Day three has to be a positive day, similar to day one, but positive day which shows recovery, which shows buying. This is a morning star. The most important critical thing to keep in mind in a morning star is the body of day one and the body of day two should not overlap. The body of day one and body of day two should not overlap. You can have the shadows overlapping, right? But the bodies should not be overlapping. Day two and day three body also should not overlap. You can have the shadows overlapping, but there should be space between this and this, this day and this day. This is the most critical thing about the stars, the morning stars. When we have a pattern like this, let's say we get our shadows back, we have a pattern like this, it raises a high possibility of a market trending, reversing and trending on the upside. Very high probability pattern works most of the time in the morning star. The mirror image of a morning star is on a rising market where day one is positive. It is in line with the market. It is positive. Day two is a spinning top, the small bodied candle. The color of day two in both the cases are irrelevant. It can be a positive, it can be a negative, does not matter. It has to be a small body. Day three brings in some amount of selling in the market. It, it can be similar to day one, but the important thing is it has to be negative. Again, the most important thing is the shadows can overlap, but if you remove the shadows, there should be vacuum space in day one and day two and day two and day three. This is the most critical thing. This is an evening star, which is a very successful trend reversal pattern when they form up, generally market reverses on the downside. I hope that's clear part. <clears throat> Thanks. That's good. So you'll find these patterns there on the charts. Evening star, morning star are not very common patterns. They're slightly rare. Three candlesticks make up a pattern. Uh, coming back to the same point, look into charts. The more you look into it, uh, start looking for them. Uh, you would like to find them everywhere, but when they form, when they shape up, it's good to trade these patterns because uh, they tend to go right most of the time. Good questions. Okay. <clears throat> Is that all? Uh, any doubts, anyone? We let me ask um, Advait. Any doubt? Yes or no? I'm here. We have. We still have time to clear out your doubts. Parth, Sachin, Sanjeev, Prabhakaran. Go through the videos if you have not, uh, you know, managed to go through all of them. Uh, within the NCCMP module, um, as because we brush up all the uh, you know aspects of the financial markets, 
Um, the curriculum is quite exhaustive, but it leaves gives us space to learn and uh, you know cultivate these subjects uh, further. So feel free to uh, you know research a bit and read more about these subjects of fundamentals, options, uh, technicals, derivatives. It's not all. You, we won't find a book that will have all. So if you are interested, I'll suggest that read on, move on and read for the more parallel practice. Uh, if you are into trading, trade. If you're not into trading and want to trade and invest, uh, do paper trades, hypothetical trades before you have the confidence to put in your hard-earned money. Always uh, get the confidence level going because that is the make or break in the market. So do paper trades, do, do hypothetical trades of your understanding of the market check yourself that whatever you've learned, whatever you understand, is it in line with the market? Is the, is the market behaving as if, as per your analysis, your understanding? Uh, when it does, you have the confidence. And when you have the confidence, it raises uh, the possibility of holding onto your stocks and making money. Um, so keep on moving, keep, keep, keep on reading, keep on uh, researching, keep on reading new books, keep on asking questions. That's why we are having this webinar. So guys, uh, doubts? Okay, so no doubts? All right, part. There's a no from part, so we have managed to answer all his doubts. Good luck with your studies. Uh, if you feel any, all right, Sanjeev. Thank you. I guess I've managed to answer your query. So, uh, thank you, Advait. Great. So go through the videos and never hesitate to drop in a query. Even if you don't have any doubt right now, you might have later when you go through the videos and read the modules. Do not hesitate to drop in a doubt. Um, in your group, in the community. We'll make sure that we answer your question within the next 24 hours of the time you drop in your question. Um, and I'm always there. We are always here at Elon Markets to help you at every point. You've taken a bright uh, call by going through this uh, certified course and we'll make sure that we do our best from our part that uh, you pass on this uh, exam and get this certified with very good marks. And most importantly, have knowledge of the financial market so that you you walk towards financial freedom. That's our vision, financial literacy. All right. So we managed to answer most of the questions, all of the questions. Uh, thank you for participating in this webinar. All the best for your exam. And feel free to drop in any queries further. Right, guys? Thanks for joining in. Bye. Have a good weekend.